Welcome back everybody. In this video, I'm excited to talk about something that I was playing with last weekend, which was for the first time I decided to try to write a compiler that targeted JavaScript as the output. And here's what I came up with. So I have this entry point file and it defines two variables, me and Billy, and then just prints them out. That's pretty much the extent of what my language can do at this point. But the reason why I wanted to share this is I was really surprised by how easy it was to get started. So we'll start out by showing exactly what I had working. So if I do npm run build, it will take my entry point file and spit out a JavaScript file based on that entry. So if I just cat out entry and then next to it, we put the output, you can see that they are comparable files. Uh, you get the JavaScript that you would expect to get from that input. And then because it's just JavaScript, I can then run my output file and I get hello Nathan and Billy, which is what we'd expect based on my input. So while it's not the most complete language, this only took me a couple of hours having never tried it before. And so in this video, I want to show you the very li little bit of code that's necessary to get something like this going if you wanted to try it yourself. So we'll start by just opening up our primary file. So here we have a file that's just going to take the file systems module from Node and most importantly, something called generator from Babel. And this generator is what takes an AST, which is an abstract syntax tree, and produces our JavaScript output file. And then we just write it to a file using file system module again. So the only work that we actually have to do here is read in the code, the source code, and then create an AST in the shape that Babel expects. Now I'll put a link to AST Explorer in the description because that's actually what I use to write all of my code. So quickly I'll show you what my tests look like and that will give you an idea of kind of what I was aiming for. So here we have a empty file. So line 18 here, this is what I would expect to produce if the input file or the entry point uh, was empty. And I just ran an empty compiler in the, or empty source code in the uh, AST Explorer. It gave me this output and then I was able to say, all right, I need to write a parser that given this input produces this output. And then I did the same thing with uh, other types of inputs. So we'll go past, that's the expected output. And so here we have, if we're expecting, if our input is name as Nathan, then it needs to produce this output. And so you can see that here we have a variable declaration and the declarator is name and the value is the string literal Nathan. So this gave me the shape of my desired output, which meant that I could then use that when testing my parser. So if I switch over to that, here we have our actual parser. So I've got an AST and I wrap this in a function just so that I could get a new instance of the AST every time because I do modify the AST in place while the parser is running. So this kind of scaffolds out the shape of what the AST will be. And then I have some uh, custom data types in place. So variable declaration, variable declarator, just some helpers that will help me build out the AST as I go. Argument, type, string literal, all these kinds of things. And then some basic checks for things like, is it a declaration, is it a log, is it a string? Right, and my program doesn't handle a lot of things right now, so there's a lot of naive assumptions in here, but this little blob is pretty much the entire parser right now. And so all it's doing is splitting every single line, and then it's going line by line and splitting those lines at the uh, space characters into tokens, and then just takes the tokens and runs them through, is it a declaration? If it is, is it a string? And if it is a string, then it can take the string, clean the string up, and then produce a variable declaration based on the fact that we know it's a declaration and we know it's a string. We can then modify the declarator such that it fits the shape of the AST that's expected, 
push that output onto the AST. So that's what we're doing on this line, line 92. And so if I just wanted to walk through that again to make it entirely clear, we end up with this declaration. And the declaration is created as a variable declaration, which is, again, just a custom data type that I made. So this is the shape of the object that we want. We then modify the declaration by adding a declarator. The declarator is, again, a custom data type that looks like this. We'll populate it with the pieces from the token that we're currently looking at. And then we just modify the AST itself based on the declaration, which has included the uh, declarator and its list of declarations. And then we do the same thing with if it's a log. So only one of these if blocks will run each time. So this one will run if the current line is a declaration. This one will run if it's a log. And the same sort of rules apply. Modif create a custom data type as a console statement. Excuse me. Add the arguments to that statement expression and then push that onto the AST. And then at the very end, we return the AST. And then we've just got this little piece that ties it all together where we create a new instance of our AST, which again was this thing at the very top that just scaffolds out the shape of our AST, modifies it by parsing the program, using the source code, modifying the AST directly, and then returning the AST. So if we then quickly look back at our main file that we actually run to build, it's pretty straightforward, right? We have an entry point that gets read in full <laughs> as a stream. I'm not even streaming it. Like that's how proof of concept we're going here. We get some code. We could produce an AST. Again, the AST structure was based on AST Explorer, which gave me the chance to, uh, where's the inspector? I sure hope it's Explorer, because <laughs> that's what I've been saying. Uh, but that gives me an AST that Babel knows how to parse into JavaScript. I give it to Babel. Babel gives me an output, and I write that to a file. And that's the whole thing. So anyway, I just thought this was really great because you don't have to write your own traversal for the AST uh, in order to produce the output. You can focus on one little piece, which is just taking your language, producing an AST that Babel expects, and Babel takes care of the rest. So I'll push this up uh, to GitHub, and I'll probably include a reference to the exact commit that all this code is in uh, for this video so that as I push this to the future, it, as I push to this in the future, should I continue to actually work on it, uh, it will still look like the correct code relative to this video. So that's that. Uh, hope you found this mildly interesting or at least half as interesting as I did. And uh, if I end up making another video sometime, maybe in 2025, I'll see you then. Bye, guys.